May the Spirit of the Lord, God Almighty in Christ Jesus, give you ears to hear, give you a heart of understanding, a heart of wisdom, and may he bless your mind to be sanctified and solidified to desire Christ Jesus for salvation, to desire his will for your life. If you want to spend forever with God. So a lot of people in this world I want to talk about that, especially professed believers, they cannot define the word or, or define what a Christian is. They can't define what that is when what comes to mind most or majority of some professed believers what a christian is it's just someone who goes to church or it's just someone who reads the bible and goes to church not in regarding lifestyle not in regarding of the mindset not regarding of the actions that you are supposed to see when you walk uprightly before God and being upright is describing holiness. When you walk uprightly before God, the world and not not just in boasting uh, in an arrogant way, but your boast is supposed to be in Jesus. Your boasting in Christ Jesus is supposed to give off what is called in the word of God light. You are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. That is a definition of a Christian. A Christian is also described as Christ-like. We do things, we do what Jesus does. We have the mind of Christ. That is your purpose as a Christian. You define, you, you walk in the definition of his glory. You walk in the definition of his righteousness in obedience because he obeyed the father perfectly. He obeyed the will of the father. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of my father. And he has done so. He is victorious because he has defeated sin and death. So what you have to realize is you are without excuse when you name the name of, of Christ, when you Profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have to recognize that there are boundaries that you do not cross. That you do not cross. And what, I'm, what I mean is that you can't do what the world does. You can't um, say something is okay to partake in. And then you partake in not even referencing God. Not even acknowledging God in the matter. The word of God says in Proverbs, acknowledge him in all of your ways. He will direct your path. God is spirit. God is spirit. We worship him in spirit and in truth. So he knows all things. He knows what's best for your life. He knows what is good. And so him directing you by his spirit, the Holy Ghost, is to guide you into all truth. There are components to define that this person is a Christian. One of the components is worshiping him. How do you worship God? Jesus already explained. You worship him in spirit and in truth. You worship him until you are purified. He purifies, he purifies you when you worship him. And even whether it's in the gathering of the saints in the church, in pure worship, not nothing secular, not nothing carnal, not nothing worldly. A carnal mind is empty against God. You defile yourself when you partake or mix holy with profane. No, you wash when you worship God. You worship him in the beauty of holiness. That's one of the components. The second component is meditating on his word day and night. You have to have the understanding. The Holy Ghost gives understanding. Before Brother Joseph was, was saved, when he was in the world, and it's true for most people according to their testimonies, before you got saved, you did not understand this. You did not understand that at all. The Bible was just 
undefined. Um, when I was in the world, I used to be, I used to partake or try to become a hip hop rap artist. And I even try to use a few Bible verses to fit into what I, what I used to write about. And I, I opened the Bible. I could not understand it. You cannot understand the word of God. Paul mentions that in 1 Corinthians and chapter 2. So, but I'm not going to go there, but it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And what he expounded on was that you can't understand the word of God without being born again. You, can't, you have movie directors and producers who would take the word of God and make a wicked movie. Such like Star Wars, Marvel, uh, whatever is out there. Some galactic sci-fi movie. Most of the 90% of the, the movies that are sci-fi came from the Bible. Came from the Bible out of a wicked heart. Out of a wicked heart. Why I say wicked? Because it's not pure. It's not holy. It's not. It's going to lead folks astray when they think, Ah, man, that must be true. That must be in the Bible. Let me see. Let me continue to watch this movie and get some some understanding of it. Man, that's and that's how they get drawn into watching movies that are wicked before a holy God. No. So meditating on the word of God, that's why it is important. The promises of God are in the word of God. When you meditate on his word day and night, it is true that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also will not wither whatsoever he does he prospers he prospers in the glory of god he prospers as god's delight when you meditate on his word god is cleansing you he's sanctifying you and it shapes his word shapes you my wife mentioned in her in her video she just did about john chapter 6 one of the the things that Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, that he said, it is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that quickens, meaning it is the spirit that gives life. It is the spirit that revives. And it says the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit. They are life. That is what the word of God does. It shapes you. It shapes you. And. So when you meditate on day and night, God prospers you in every aspect of your life, your mind, your heart, and your soul. He wants to purify you. You are a peculiar person when you are truly born again. The third component is um, prayer. Prayer. Jesus mentions uh, men shall always pray. Paul mentions by the Spirit praying without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Praying without ceasing. You see examples in the Old Testament. King David is full of, full of edification of prayer in the book of Psalms. You have Nehemiah. You have Jeremiah. You have all the major prophets, even some of the minor prophets in the Old Testament that pray. Even some that are not prophets, but like in First Samuel, First Samuel or Hannah, she prayed unto the Lord. Prayer shapes you. It's your communication with God. It's your your relationship. You develop your relationship with Jesus Christ when you are committed to Him. You are developing your relationship with the Father, and God cleanses you. So prayer, worship, and reading the Word of God. Jesus says. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If you are defining the word Christian, Jesus describes what that is. He perfectly on the Sermon on the Mount, Mount uh, Matthew chapter five, and I believe it's Luke chapter six, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Go there real fast. I think that's it. Luke chapter six. Just to make sure, good man, good treasure, just not yes. That was a sermon on the mountain in Luke chapter 6. Yes, he said, Blessed are the hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. You know, Luke, Luke did not have a, um, he didn't, what's the word I'm looking for, Holy Ghost? Um,
He didn't have eyewitness. He wasn't an eyewitness to Jesus like John and Matthew. They were eyewitnesses. So Luke wrote the gospel of wrote the gospel of out of by the spirit, by the spirit, just like Mark. So many things that are written in the word of God, the word of God, again, is supposed to shape you and purify you so you can obey, so you can receive instructions. And if you are called to minister the word of God, the commandment by Paul, he said this in first Timothy, second Timothy chapter four, he says, and the spirit of God commands, it says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So that's a commandment. You are commanded to preach. You, a, a, a Christian is Christ-like. You are commanded to be like Jesus. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is perfect. And so I like the way uh, my pastor mentioned in, I believe it was yesterday's discipleship or the last service, but he brought up some powerful things that reminded me of my coming up in the faith that when I first became a believer in Jesus Christ and became born again, God saved me, chosen me out of this world as a, as his chosen vessel is, you know, to define Christianity is to be like Jesus is to do what Jesus said. Christianity is Jesus, holy Jesus, he is perfect. He knew no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. And so in Mark chapter 16, he commands, this is after his resurrection. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's a commandment. He that believes, meaning your heart agrees what he says. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not will be damned. And these signs will follow them that believe in my name, Jesus, in my name. Let's not get it confused. You must know what it says. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, heavily, a heavenly language, the language that Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, the unknown language heavenly language they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it will by no means hurt them it's not talking about willfully going and seek a serpent to see if you will be bitten by a serpent and see if they won't harm you no it's not talking about that if that happens nothing will harm you you saw that with the apostle paul when he was um in acts i believe it's 20 at acts 27 he uh, it says a viper wrapped around his arm and he shook it off and threw it into the fire. They And it bit Paul and the people that, were, that saw that, they thought he was going to die. But no, it is what Jesus said. It is what Jesus says that if they drink any deadly thing or anything that happens, your faith in God is supposed to be ever increasing. Your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is supposed to be like walk Walking on water type faith. Your faith in God is supposed to be solidified in Christ Jesus so that you can grow as the branch to bear the fruit of his righteousness. And then it says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes, God gives man power to glorify him. Healing is a judgment. Healing is is a part of the casting out of devils. When you cast out a devil as a Christian, you are processing healing. And God is glorified through the casting out of devils. God is glorified through healing. And there are many testimonies I have when I lay hands on my sons. Uh, whenever they was afflicted, I lay hands in the name of Jesus. They was made well. They was made whole. I have many testimonies about that, but it's not about what I can do. It's about God being glorified. It's about God being manifested in the true born again Christian's life. You are truly born again. You fear God. So I want to go to Luke chapter, Luke chapter 21. Let's see. Yes. 21. I was meditating on this. 
to define what what Christ, what a Christian is. Acts chapter chapter twenty six describes that, and First Peter chapter four defines that. So we're gonna look at that, but Luke chapter twenty one. I'm gonna read what Jesus says, um, and it, it it pretty much defines one one part of or one definition of what it is and or what we are what we are as christians and i'm talking about the truly born again christians in verse 24 of luke chapter 21 it said jesus says and they shall fall by the edge of the sword matter of fact let me back it up verse 23 but woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days for there shall be great hold on one second i believe i skipped it son of the no, I didn't skip it. Praise God. So, in those days, matter of fact, verse 25. Here we go. Because I had to remember what I was reading earlier. I was meditating on Luke chapter 21. So, verse 25 says this, Jesus. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth. Distress of nations with perplexity. That means confusion. The sea and the waves roaring. So Jesus is describing, just like he described in Matthew 24, that there will be wars and rumors of wars, men's house, uh, hearts carousing with drunkenness. And Jesus says, when you see these things, do not worry, do not be startled, do not be, do not allow fear to enter into your heart. And what he means by that is the true born again Christian has poise when you meditate on his word day and night when you worship him in spirit and in truth and when you seek him in prayer every day praying without ceasing and that doesn't that mean praying all day without stopping no that means prayer communicating with god acknowledging him in all of your ways if you're in the store and or somewhere you are acknowledging god about your awareness um, and you know, acknowledge your God. Whether you're at work, you acknowledge your God about your atmosphere. You acknowledge your God about the conditions of the atmosphere. Lord, sanctify me from this atmosphere. Protect me from the spirit of the world. Make your word clear before my face. Your relationship is supposed to be solidified in Jesus by your prayer and development. Your development in prayer. So. Jesus mentions and he says men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in the in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. Jesus is describing his return and the true, the, the true born again Christian is to find those who watch and pray. Jesus commanded his people to watch. He commanded his disciples to watch and pray. Likewise, for the Christian, we are commit, we are watchmen. We are watchmen. We pray and about everything. Everything. You can't hide nothing from God. Nothing is hidden that will not be revealed. Nothing revealed will not remain hidden. You confess everything to Jesus. How do you think that your heart is supposed to be pure before a mighty God when you stand before him? Bless all those who bless are the pure heart for they shall see God. So in verse 29, he spoke them. He spoke them to a parable. And he says. Hmm. I don't believe this is the one I'm, I was trying to find. Watched. Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. So, and this I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start in verse thirty three. So, Jesus mentioned, Jesus mentioned about his return, and his disciples wanted to know the signs of his return. So he says in verse thirty three, "Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away." And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time. Now listen to this. Lest at any time, mean pay attention to your to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, meaning 
your 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 hearts be overcharged with uh overindulgence of sin. I gotta read that part again. So Jesus warns his disciples, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts, your heart is supposed to be changed by God, is you're supposed to have clean hands and a pure heart when you are faithful and obedient to him. So your heart is pure before God. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, meaning overindulgence and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day comes upon you unawares. Jesus is coming at an hour. No one expects the word of God says there are there are people dying. People die every day. You don't know when your time is up in this world. If you are not faithful to God, who is holy, a lot of people get the scripture confused out of John chapter 10 that when Jesus mentioned about they will not pluck, they will not be plucked out of my hand, out of my father's hand. They will not be plucked, which is true. But the falling away from the faith is at hand. People are falling away from the faith. You have people who are ungodly. You have people who are in the world that want nothing to do with God. And they die in that condition. For the professed believer who does, does things in secret that is not the will of God, they will be judged. They take that scripture out of context that I will not be plucked out of the Lord's hands. Yet when you are led astray and your heart is overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, your heart is going to turn from God. The Lord mentioned that um, through Nathan the prophet when he was talking about building the house of God to King David. King David wanted to build the house of God, but the Lord was like, no, your son will build it. And he and the Lord mentioned that when well, he warned Solomon, he warns King Solomon that if you will not if you will not go into the strange woman. No, I'm sorry. That's Moses. That's the law of Moses. Your heart will be turned from the, the cares of the Lord, the, the, the way of the Lord. You are easily led astray. People fall away from the faith for many different reasons. Your heart will be turned away. The, the cares of this life, the, the carousing of, of drunkenness or the overindulgence. People partake in things that turns their heart or distorts their cares for the Lord or the love of the Lord from God. And then they end up in hell. They are led astray. People die in sin. You don't want to be the one who is caught compromising. You don't want to be the one who is caught unfaithful. And Jesus comes. You are in your con a condition that rejects God. There is punishment for that. Jesus warns. So the once saved, always saved doctrine has no play whatsoever in the Bible. You, it is the devil confusing you. It is the devices of the enemy defiling you into perplexity. And so and it's not wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly the devil. It is yourself as well. The Lord giving you over because you choose not to obey. You choose not to obey Jesus. You choose not to follow him. Because the father commanded that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Follow him. And. You people die in sin because they don't follow Jesus. People die in rebellion because they don't follow Jesus. They don't commit to Jesus. Jesus should be your everything if you profess to be a Christian. Yes. So he says and warns his disciples, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unawares meaning you will, he will come on a day that you know not of yes he comes as a thief revelation chapter of 16 i believe jesus the resurrected jesus the one who is seated at the right hand of the father he says this um bless he says behold i come as a thief Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walks naked and they see his shame your garments are supposed to be pure. 
you you are supposed to have the wedding garments, the wedding garments of this the marriage supper of the Lamb. That represents the righteousness of the saints. You can find that in Revelation as well. Your righteousness unto God through Christ Jesus is your garments. Blessed is he who watches. God commands to watch and pray. Blessed is he who watches. Meaning you are aware. You are acknowledging God in all that you do. Prayer, supplication, worshiping him and meditating on his word. That's watching. God is spirit. He delivers his saints from temptation and from evil, When you, especially when you ask. When you are faithful and obedient to God, it is impossible to fail because God is, is with you. God is with you. He blesses you. He wants to, he wants to grow, increase you in every form. You are a branch. Jesus Christ is the true vine. The father is the husband man. You grow to bear the fruit of his righteousness. And then Jesus says, I like the way he says this right here. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the, of the whole earth. So he commands right here, right here. Watch therefore and pray always, not sometimes, pray always. Your communication, your relationship with God Almighty and Jesus Christ is supposed to be developed by praying always. He said it. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You're going to stand before God one day. You're going to stand before Jesus. You will give an account of every idle word. You're going to be given, you will give an account of every good thing, every bad thing. Solomon mentions in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, you will be judged when you stand before God as a Christian, truly born again Christian who is faithful and obedient to the father, focused on the Lord, have that narrow concentration. You will spend forever with God. That is the promise. You want to spend forever with the father. You want to spend forever with Jesus. You are supposed to be a child of the day, the ch a ch the children of the day, a child of light. In God, there is no darkness. Likewise for the Christian. Likewise for the Christian. If your eye be dark, if your eye be dark, your whole body will be full of corruption, defilement. And if you think that as light, how great is that darkness Jesus mentioned in Matthew chapter 6? What he meant by that is, the, he's talking about the compromise. When you compromise, when you allow things that defile you and distort your mind, you are defiled from within. Revelation mentions that no defiled thing will enter into the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and earth. No defi nothing defiling because Satan tried that when he was Lucifer in heaven. He became defiled in his heart by Saying, I will be like the most high. The five I wills. I'm not going to name all of them. But pride was found in his heart. That's why pride is the most hated sin. And I could be wrong about that. But when I look at Proverbs chapter 6. The six things that the Lord hates. Yet seven are an abomination. The first thing on that list is the proud look. Proud look. You look pride. You got arrogance in your heart. You got pride in your heart. So you think you're the best at all things that you do. You are competitive. Before a holy God, you are competitive. You think you are perfect in such a way that gives off arrogancy, that gives off um, a, a, a subtlety to be better than anybody. It's not about that. It's about Jesus Christ and his righteousness and his holiness. It's about the good news of Jesus Christ that died for you and I, rose again on the third day forever, defeating sin and death and is glorified. And guess what? He's coming back. Yes, at an hour nobody expects. So let me read that verse again. Luke chapter 21, verse uh, 36, Jesus commands, he commands, watch Therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So he commands to watch and pray. So when I first remember the first time I read that verse, yes, Lord, when I stand, I'm, I'm praying every day, every day, ever since I read that, 
Lord, let me be accounted worthy to escape whatever trial, tribulation that is set before me so that I will stand before you as a faithful and worthy servant. Jesus Christ wants you to be faithful. The Lord wants you to be obedient unto him. And he has the instructions to do so. The Proverbs, I mentioned again, Proverbs chapter 2, that it starts off as Solomon by the spirit and wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and in truth, says, and I like the way it talks, it starts off as, it seems like it's a father talking to the son, and it is. It says, my son, if you receive my words and hide my commandments with you, and that if you incline your ear to wisdom and and apply your heart to understanding, if you lift up your voice for knowledge and, uh, what does it say? It says something else about wisdom, that when you do those instructions, wisdom will take force in your heart uh, and take play in your heart, understanding and knowledge. And then it says further on, it says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God. Then he says, for God gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly, meaning he's your protector. He is your defense and discretion will preserve you, meaning good judgment, righteous judgment made and taken place in your life or applied will uh, preserve you. So it, and, it, and uh, the word of God is true. All scripture is given by inspiration by God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof and correction and instructions in righteousness. So what's in the Old Testament? God commands you to do so by the spirit. You obey the New Testament as well. You obey because the father and the son and his spirit, these three are one as described in first John chapter five. So False religions don't believe that, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, like the Mormons, like uh, any any false religion, because cr a Christian describes Jesus Christ. Um, you won't find. I remember. I remember this. I remember this. I was um, going to a community college at one point, and I just stopped going because it wasn't the will of God. But I took a world religions traditions class. I was the only Christian in there. And the instructor, she, I don't know what she was. I don't know what religion she was professing. I don't know what she was. But it was like at least about, I would say, 12, maybe 14 people in the classroom. Everybody professing, one person professing Catholic. Excuse me. Another person was professing some other religion. But all is against Christ, you are in a different religion. I mentioned, I made one point, one, one valid point that you will not find the word Catholic in the Bible. You will not find the word Mormon in the Bible. You will not find, you will find Jehovah in the Bible. That's in the Old Testament. That's the Lord's name. But the doctrine of a Jehovah's Witness is not, is, is heretical. Uh, what else? Some other, some other things that that was being talked about in the class. And I made a, and somebody, uh, so this one guy who professed to be Catholic, he said, uh, he said, there's the word Christian's not in the Bible. And I brought up uh, Acts 26. It was King Agrippa, as I turned there, let me go there real fast. And I brought up Acts 26 and 1 Peter chapter 4. The word Christian is in the Bible. The word Christian is in the Bible. Acts 26. Now Paul, by the Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, born again as a chosen vessel, Paul was before King Agrippa. And then Paul gives his testimony of how he met Jesus on the road to Damascus as to persecute the Christians. He starts off and says, in verse 14, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And I said, who are you, Lord? Paul, see this great light. Paul, as Saul, Saul before, Saul saw this great light. 
and he knew it was the Lord. But he says, who are you, Lord? He's in he's marveled. He's astonished at the appearance or the countenance of Jesus. And he said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto you for this purpose to make you a minister and a witness both of these things which you have seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send you to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon King Agrippa, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient. Now this is Paul still speaking. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. The same message that John the Baptist preached, the same uh, message that Jesus Christ preached and his disciples. So for these cause, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me, having therefore obtained help of God. I continue unto this day. Witnessing both to small and great, saying not no other things that than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Let me go ahead and go to verse 28. So. Let me see for the king knows of the let me see, but he said, I am not mad. No. So King Agrippa thought he was mad. Meaning he thought he was crazy. So, but Paul mentioned and said, I am not mad. Most No, he was talking to Festus, I'm sorry. Most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knows of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa King Agrippa believed the pro do you believe the prophets? He asking King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, now listen to this. Um, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. That's what he says. So the word Christian is one. The word Christian is in the Bible. The word Christian is in the Bible right there. That's one spot. So the word Christian. So let me go to 1 Peter chapter 4. Peter was, Peter by the Spirit was mentioning about the definition of or the acts or the fruits of a Christian. So he, he I'm going to read the first eight verses. And it says, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. So he's telling you to arm yourself as a holy and perfect unto God the Father in the likeness of Jesus. Uh, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. He's talking about from when you are passed from darkness to light. You are you have ceased from sin, you stop sinning and you are desiring to be like Jesus. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us, meaning it is sufficient to us, have performed the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine. Revellings, banquetings, meaning wild parties, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them. So when you are truly born again as a Christian, we don't do what the world does. And when the world see that we don't do what they do, they look at us like we're aliens, like like, like we're weird, like we're just some 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 strange person. That why does he need watch? 
uh, NBA, the NBA playoffs. Why is he listening to them? You don't. What you mean you don't listen to uh, watch rated R movies? I got asked that question about last week from a person who was talking about they celebrate Christmas and profess to be a Christian. You don't watch rated R movies? What for? I don't have no reason to. It's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. Think it not strange. That's what Peter is mentioning right here. Wherein they, they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this, for, for this cause was the gospel preached unto, also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but living, but live according to God in the spirit. And it says this, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Same thing that Jesus said in Luke chapter 20, uh, 21. Same thing that Jesus said in Matthew 24. Watch and pray. Same thing that Jesus said in Revelation. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he who watches. So he didn't really command it in Revelation, but he says, Blessed is he who watches, meaning highly favored of God for those who watch and keep their garments, lest he walks naked and they see his shame. So now Peter get, is giving instructions, but he says this again. He reemphasizes. He says, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceedingly joy exceeding joy now here it is in verse 14 nope I'm almost there it's in verse 16 so I'm in verse 14 it says if you be reproached for the name of Christ meaning if you are being blamed for doing the will of God Almighty in Christ Jesus obeying Jesus Happy are you for the spirit of, of glory and of God rests on you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. So people who are ungodly, who are not saved, who see that you are obedient to God, they're going to hate that. Why? Because they live a lifestyle of rejecting God. They live a lifestyle of banqueting and partying and doing foul things. Before a holy God who sees all. And they gonna, they hate goodness. Paul made a, uh, not made a list, but he gave a list in Romans chapter 3. But he says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. That's someone who is, who is this nosy describing you you gotta find out you you're gossiping you went you gotta find out about everybody's business no you're supposed to lead a quiet life humble God resists the proud He gives grace to the humble a busybody is described as one who is proud and is in everybody's business that's what He's describing now here it is again yet if any man suffer as a Christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God. On this behalf. So there's that word again. It's in the Bible. There it is again. That word Christian. There it is again. Christian is in the Bible. Again, Roman Catholicism is not in the Bible. Uh, jo uh, Jehovah's, Jehovah's in the Bible. Uh, Mormons is not in the Bible. None of those false religions. Buddhists is not in the Bible. You can't be a Christian Buddhist. You can't be a Christian Catholic at the same time. It doesn't mix. You're mixing holy with the profane. You can't be a Christian and something else. No. It's Jesus or nothing. It's Jesus or nobody. It's Jesus or nothing. To, be, to know that you're sealed, you, your faithfulness and your obedience to God is exceeding. Is exceeding. Your life is glorifying God. Your mind is meditating on his word. Your mind is, is solidified by meditating on what is just and noble and true and praiseworthy and of good report and lovely. And if any kind of virtue, any kind of praise to meditate on those things. 
And so your heart is set on God. Your heart wants to engage God. And that's what needs to change. Bless all the pure in heart for they will see God. You need sanctification. You need to be born again. You need to be faithful and obedient unto God, which conditions your salvation. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.